Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Ginger Show. I am so excited today. I have Amber De La Gaza here with us. She is a productivity specialist and is one of my favorite uh, topics. So thank you, uh, Amber, for joining us today. Yes, thank you for having me. I'm looking forward to chatting with you about productivity and business ownership. Awesome. So I am just going to tell everybody a little bit about you. So Amber De La Garza is a productivity specialist. Amber helps small business owners maximize profits, reduce stress, and make time for what matters most by improving their time management and elevating their productivity. Amber is a sought after coach, trainer, speaker, writer, host of the Productivity Straight Talk podcast, and a creator of Leverage Lab. Yes. So you are very busy. Yes, all the ways in which I can share the message about productivity and time management for business owners. Yay. Well, I'm so excited. Um, you know, I really want my viewers to learn about this and why it's important. And, you know, I really know that for me, it's a very important thing um, to find that productivity and work-life balance. And so today our uh, topic is how to create a sustainable work-life balance with Amber De La Garza, the productivity specialist. So we'll go right into it. So what does imbalance look and feel like, Amber? Yeah. So I think this is really common um, feeling that many business owners have. You know, we're goal oriented. We like to go after things. And oftentimes, you know, it's framed that we're going after these big goals in our businesses at the expense of other areas of our lives, like self-care or health or spending quality time with loved ones or perhaps even having a hobby. And the work that I do is all about um, ensuring that, like you said in the intro, is like reducing stress. When we feel out of balance, it feels very stressful. There's guilt, there's shame that comes around it. Oftentimes, that's very emotionally charged. We feel like we're living out of balance. And so when we live out of balance, it then affects how we're showing up in our business, right? So we cannot show up our best when we're not in a place where we can really focus on taking care of ourselves. Uh, so imbalance can have a lot of symptoms that have these rippling effects throughout our business and our life. And I would love to say that um, the opposite of imbalance is, well, how do you describe being in balance? And that's where I think it can get a little tricky because you and I probably have two different definitions of what balance looks like. It's not equal time, equal hours or attention, but really finding out what it is that we each want in our lives and being able to give that the time and attention it deserves. Excellent. Yes, I definitely feel that stress myself as a business owner. Um, you know, oftentimes I feel, you know, my husband uh, gets neglected, you know, not that I'm not cooking dinner or doing those kind of things, but you know, after dinner, he's going and sitting and having some leisure time and I'm coming back to the desk to work some more. Yeah. And oftentimes I, you know, I get working and the next thing I know, I notice it's 10 o'clock and he's going to bed. And so I'm like, oh no, you know, and, and yeah, so I feel that guilt, you know, like, oh my God, you know, I, I didn't spend any time with my husband today. So I'm so yeah. excited for you to help us, um, you know, learn how mm -hmm. to, to fix that and, and, and do better. So um, what are some visualization techniques that are useful for gaining clarity in this in this department? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm going to be sharing with you a three-step process on creating more work-life balance. And the first step start, starts with visualization and visualizing, meaning seeing what it is that you want to create. Like what is your version of being in balance? Uh, this is really important because what I find is business owners normalize right? So maybe you've normalized working after dinner, right? Like that's just the norm. That's the routine, right? Or working weekends or going in early or saying no to a social event. It doesn't seem like that is um, abnormal. It becomes the normal. And so once it becomes the normal, we stop questioning it. We're like, oh, can it be different? Can, can my work can my business succeed if I do not work after hours, right? If I do not work after dinner and start asking those questions. So the visualization is the part of like, okay, if I could wave a magic wand and I could say, you know what, balance to me looks like getting off at three o'clock when my son's out of school, being able to take all those random school holidays where it feels like the kids are never in school, right? Like, can I also not work those days? Can I run a business where I don't work on the weekends? So like that would be me questioning how I'm running my business, the time that I'm putting into the business to be able to clearly visualize it. 
Another one might be, you know, I want to run this successful business and take a four-week vacation. Like, okay, so really, what does that look like? How can I visualize that? And that might be pulling down Pinterest pictures, having images, creating a vision board. And this, to me, the first step is just seeing that it's possible. Okay? Okay. Yeah. And then the second step is going a bit deeper, and it's like defining it. So if I wanted to do a four-week vacation, does that mean I want four weeks at one time? Do I want four one-week vacations? Do I want one on the beach and one in the mountains? Getting so, so clear about specifically what it is that I want to create. I've had some clients that have done this, and they visualized, you know, when I was younger, I loved dancing. Like, could I pick up dancing again, like competitive dancing in my 40s and run this business? Like that's the first step, visualization. And then defining it, it's like, well, I'd have to go back to a studio and I'd have to take classes two days a week. What days would I be able to take that? So getting super, super clear. Um, And then once you've gotten clear about what it is that you want to create to just start putting a little more balance in the areas of your life that you feel like you're out of balance in, then the third step would be to claim it. And this is where the work comes in, right? The first step, the second step, that's fun. You know, visualizing it, seeing it, uh, getting clear about it, doing some research, getting the details worked out. But the third one is claiming it. And unfortunately, um, some people think, well, if I, if I just decide I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. And that's not always the case. This is where we have to figure out, okay, well, what would it take to not work weekends anymore? What do I need to do in my business to not work nights and still hit my goals? Like those are the questions that where now your, your idea of creating more work-life balance will bring up areas in your business that you can make different strategic decisions. You can make business um, like changes in your staffing. There's going to be a lot of things that could come up, but the goal is that you start fixing those so that you can truly stop telling yourself it's not possible and start finding the solutions for it. Yes. And I I keep thinking about my night working, you know, and how, you know, I, there's gotta be a way. And, you know, I have a national marketing agency, so my team is all over the country and Mm -hmm. majority of my team is on the West coast. And so even though it's eight o'clock here, it's five o'clock there. And so I, you know, I want to be there for my team and I want, you know, but yes, you're right. And when you, when you mentioned it might, it might uh, include like staff changes, you know, maybe, getting some more people on the East coast so that I'm not so worried about what the West coast is doing or have somebody on the East coast. Yeah. So yes. And another, I I could see it's a possibility. Now I just have to get there. Right. But you have to really want it. And so when we're looking at this pursuit of, you know, I call it the and method. So I have this successful business that's reaching X benchmark, right. Of revenue. And I have time for self-care and I have time to have quality time with my husband or my kids or to volunteer. Like what's that and method for you? Like what is the and formula that you want to create? And once you've created the goals of your, in your personal life and your business life to work synergistically, that's when you feel like you're more in balance because when you have these goals in your business that, that are at odds, right, with the things that you want to create over here, it's always going to feel stressful. It's always going to feel like you're out of balance. Ginger, I just wanted to speak to something that you said is that you can get incredibly creative with creating your own balance. Like that's why we chose to be business owners, right? And so for you, if you did need to work in the evenings, like What would that look like if you did like a Monday day date with your husband or maybe you cut out, you know, a couple hours like from three to seven o'clock and you cut out of the office a little bit early because you knew you were going to do a couple hours in the evening. I've got lots of clients that, you know, their idea of balance isn't a nine to five. And I think that's brilliant for us to be reminded of is that our our um, schedules don't need to look like the rest of the world. It could be what works for our business, what works for our families, and what works for us. Some people like literally do their best work at night, right? So why would I say actually balance needs to look like cutting out at five o'clock when now they're cutting out the time that they work their best? So getting really clear um, about what that could look like for each of us and then claiming it. And then, and then, and then once you claim it, it's like, hey, 
who do I need to tell on my team that I'm going to be out on a Thursday? I mean, I mean, on a Monday for a few hours, who needs the cover and start moving into finding the solutions because I think the pursuit of finding your own balance is incredibly important, not just for ourselves and our soul, but for our business. Our business needs us to show up our best. And that's often when we feel like we're in balance in all areas of our life. Very true. So can you give me like three specific steps to create more balance in, in my life or in our yes. lives? Yeah. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll focus. So the three steps we're going to be like first visualize it, then define it, then claim it. Um, under claiming it, I think that some great takeaways that um, everyone can leave today's um, show with is defining what your actual work hours are. There's something called Parkinson's law. And whether you know it or not, you're living with it. Parkinson's law states that tasks expand to the time given. And so, so long as your brain says, oh, if I don't get it done on Friday, I'll go back in the office on Saturday. So long as your brain says, okay, well, even if I don't get it done by five o'clock, I'll just sneak into the office after dinner. You're not putting these hard boundaries on your time and our tasks expand. And we see this happening all around us. Have you ever um, had like a presentation where you started three weeks early and you're like, oh my gosh, I worked on the presentation like almost every day for those three weeks. Or you had a presentation and you started it four days before. And somehow that same presentation could get done in four days or it can get done over a three week period. Is that that tasks expand when we don't give them these confined deadlines. And that can work over a three week period, like I gave as an example, but it can also work in our day to day when we're looking at our schedules, there will always be more work. That'll bring me to tip number two. Um, get at peace with your to do list because it's never going to go away. So when we decide we're going to work later, work longer, work after hours, it's always because there's just one more thing to do, one more thing to do. So and the truth is, right, if we got what we wanted, like what we're kind of wishing, like, OK, I'll just get it all done. That's the day you're out of business. And so if you can focus on the fact that there will always be a to do list and then switching to look at your to-do list as what are your top priorities and getting those done within the day and the week that you have defined as your work week, you will have a much more productive week. And some of the things, while we have a lot of these, some of the things that are not as high of a priority may not get done, but can you be okay with that so long as you get to live a balanced life? I love that, you know, how you mentioned, you know, making deadlines and things, because, you know, one of the things I just thought about when you were talking was about the to-do list. So I have two to-do two to do lists. I have yeah. a to-do list for my business and I have a to-do list for my personal life. And what I've noticed is like, I need to make an appointment with an ENT example. Yep. It's been on my to-do list for three weeks and my assistant keeps saying, got to make that appointment, got to make that appointment. And it keeps getting pushed, Amber. And I think the reason is, is because I'm not putting a deadline on my own personal stuff. Yeah. I'm very good at putting deadlines on my team for the work stuff, making sure we're getting stuff done for our clients. But my personal to-do list, oh, it doesn't need a deadline. We'll just do it when we can. But then it never gets done. That's right. Those are always the tasks that get rolled over. Uh -huh. And to your point, um, the things that we often do for ourselves, whether it's personal or even in our business, because you and I both know there's tasks and projects that we, are wants. We want to do this. We know it could help the business. But when there's not that external deadline, and then we also don't create an internal deadline, like a deadline for it, those are the things that just keep getting rolled over, rolled over. So by creating deadlines, either externally or internally, um, it will always move things through your task list a lot faster. Yeah, that's that's great. I'm definitely going to put that, implement that into my life because I'm, I'm definitely, you know, seeing that um, there's an imbalance, you know, in the personal and the work stuff. So and, um, and I can't help. We weren't going to talk about this, but I, I can't help to always coach. I have my coaching hat on. So one simple way, and I think this would be helpful for anyone listening to, that's why I want to share it, is um, I do a personal power hour during the week. So I have a business power hour, but a personal power hour. And it's all those random things. 
the bill didn't go through. You had a call during work hours. You got to make a doctor's appointment. You have to whatever. There's all these things that often have to be done within a business day. And instead of having those like creep up on your to-do list throughout the week or they just roll over week after week, what I do is I compile them all because they're all those little pesky tasks, right? They're not really urgent. They're not really like really important. But if ignored, they start becoming stressful. So Mm -hmm. I create an hour on my schedule. It's yellow on my calendar because that's personal. And I'll just power through all of those personal things. And that is a snippet of my own personal work-life balance because I get to do that during the work day and not feel stressed about it. And it supports my home life. I'm going to put that on my calendar. <laughs> personal power hour. And I'm yes. going to get those tasks done because they do, you know, I do, you know, like you were saying earlier about the shame and the blame and the guilt. And it's like, okay, you know, why do I keep neglecting myself, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and I love my business and, you know, my clients. And so I, you know, I prioritize them. Um, but again, like you said, it can become detrimental if you allow it to keep going. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I, I might, this might be a redundant question, but you know, why is it so important to claim this balance for yourself? Yeah, I think, um, so I'm going to share this with an example of a client of mine. Her name is Vita, and it goes back to um, her wanting to dance. So she professionally danced. She runs a successful business with about seven employees, and um, she just was feeling burnt out. She was working a ton. She started working with me. And one of the things I asked her was like, what would bring you more joy? What would make you feel like you're more in balance between your personal life and your work? Because she's a mom of two, a wife, like she's all the things. And she's like, I feel like I got that handled, but there's still something missing. And when we got to the root of it, it was like she wasn't pouring into herself at all. Everything was for her business, for her loved ones. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, so what would that look like? So that's the visualization. She's like, oh my gosh, if I could get back into like those costumes and on stage and dance, like that just like fuels my soul. Okay. So then step two for her was defining it. So where, where do you go? What kind of time commitment may this require of you? Is it all coming during the workday? Is it on the weekends? And she came back and she's like, okay, I can take one class on the Saturday and I can take one class on a Wednesday and then I can start competing in a few months. So then she had to claim it. And she goes back to her schedule and she looks at it and says, okay, is it possible to take three hours off on a Wednesday morning? And who does she need to let know on her team? And how does she need to readjust her schedule? And she did it. And I'm telling you now, I get to see pictures of her dancing and competing again. But to answer your question, why does it matter? If you ask her, she's like, I'm a better business owner. I'm a better mom. I'm a better wife because I was able to um, really decide what it is that I needed, right? And then I get to be my best to pour into other people. So why is it important? It's because oftentimes we sacrifice ourselves, our health, our personal side, our hobbies, thinking that it's in the pursuit of giving it all to our business or our loved ones. And often case, it just makes us run dry and get burnt out. And so if anyone here is listening, is like, oh my gosh, I'm just exhausted and I'm burnt out. You may need to find that little piece of balance for yourself to reinvest in yourself. Absolutely. And I definitely have suffered from burnout before. And I'm very, very acutely aware of when I'm starting to feel that. Um, yeah. I know what that feels like and it feels awful. Um, yeah. You know, for me, it's going to the beach and just meditating and relaxing and reading a book. Um, so I know what I need to do for when I'm starting to feel that way. That's um, great. And, you know, I will, if I'm starting to feel that way, I will, I will just take half a day of, uh, you know, And my team too, you know, we, our mission, you know, part of our mission in our company um, is to, you know, put our mental health and our family first. And so, you know, we take oftentimes mental health days. um, And when me or one of my team members need that, um, it's just not even in question. It's like, you do it. So yeah, thanks for that burnout because I know a lot of us suffer from that. And um, I've even, one time I was like, I wonder if I have adrenal fatigue, which is like the, Like That's really- a very, very big thing for a lot of business owners because you're high stress for a long period of time, ad- adrenal fatigue and it can just wreak havoc in our bodies. And it's this circle of exhaustion yes. that, you know, one beach vacation won't fix. So it's definitely worth, you know, looking into if you've been yes. under stress for a very long time. 
Yes. Um, Ginger, I love your mission. I love that you have mental health days and that you're, you're supporting your team members like that. Um, I would just say for those of you that are listening, if you don't have that, that's a great strategy, definitely. And if you do, my question is, are you honoring it for yourselves? Because I also find with my clients that they treat their team members better than they treat themselves, meaning they will protect team members from getting burnt out, but then pick up all the slack themselves. And so this is me giving you permission to say, man, if you're leading your team, it's really you need to take care of yourself so that you can lead your team. Agreed. And, you know, I am a, you know, I, I suffer from that because I tell my team family first. Mm -hmm. But as I told you in the very beginning of the show, yeah. my husband is often last, in, 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 not last, in, but just in, in certain time blocks, right? When yeah. it comes yeah. to the evening time, you know, weekends, I'm pretty good about taking off with him because most of my, you know, I have my team take off. So yes. unless it's an emergency, you know, everybody's off. So I don't have, so it's a, it's a time that I know that I can and focus on him. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes, yeah. I have to listen, like you said, you know, to what I tell my team, I have to also do for myself. So thank you for pointing that out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and then if, if you could give us like a tip. So, you know, the the premise of the show is work or life work wellness. Um, so I kind of always ask at the towards the end of the show, if you could kind of give us some tips relating to each one. Um, so if yeah. you could, you know, for work, life and wellness, give us a little tip, tip relating for, for each one. Yeah. So for work, I would say my tip is to stop focusing on just being busy, but really focusing on being productive. And, you know, there's a lot of ways to define productivity, but I'll just share with you mine. And if you guys like it, you can, you know, take it as your own definition. But for me, productivity is when you're investing your best time. So that's going to be blocks of focus, distraction-free time when you're showing up your best on your best activities, which are the ones that actually move the needle forward in the business. If you can just give yourself the gift of no longer seeing every task as equal on your to-do list and really determining what your high value activities are and focusing on those, it will definitely help with your work-life balance. Awesome. And then um, the next one is life. So it's funny. I've actually said some of these with uh, in our conversation. So um, with life, my tip is to ensure that your work goals and your personal goals can work together synergistically. So when you go to set goals in your business or you go to set goals with your family or for yourself in your personal life, don't look at them as two separate. As business owners, uh, it's such a gray line. We are our businesses and our businesses are us. They're like an extension of us, right? Um, and this is when I think it's really important to make sure that these goals are working together and you're looking at them together like on the same page and asking yourself, what does it look like to pursue this goal and this goal together? And, and is that possible? And what's that strategy to make that possible? Instead of saying, I got to look here. And then at five o'clock, I look over here and Monday through Friday, I look over here and then maybe I'll get it to this on the weekend. Like how can they all work together synergistically? And then the last one is wellness. And this is my call to each and every one of us is not to sacrifice our health, our physical health, our mental health um, for our businesses. It is not worth it. I have been doing this work for over a decade and I've seen time and time again um, of saying, seeing business owners say next week, next month, next year, not right now. Once I hit this goal, then I'll focus on myself and health. And it's just something you're going to continually kick down the, down the street until you decide that it is the highest priority. And I can tell you it's the highest priority because when you are sick, it's never on your own time and terms and your team needs you, your clients need you. So being proactive and taking care of yourself is one of the best investments in your business as well. Yeah, definitely. Without your health, nothing else works, right? That's right. That's I remember right. getting COVID and I think I was in bed for 12 days and it was awful. And I remember thinking, oh my gosh, this is so awful. Like I... You know, it, re it really made me um, very grateful for yeah. my health. And I knew it was COVID and I knew it would pass. Yeah. But that 12 days was very much, you know, made me kind of just reevaluate um, my health in general because it made me realize, you know, 
if you get sick for anything or you have a chronic illness, boy, does it sure affect your ability to work, take care yeah. of your family, uh, everything, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like yourself, um, I also got COVID in 2021 and I was hospitalized. I was in out of my business for two months. Oh my gosh. I didn't know that, Amber. I'm so sorry. Yeah. And I actually have an episode on my podcast about how my business survived in my absence. There's a lot of business lessons in there. Like, what can we do? Because things are going to happen, whether it's your own health or a loved one gets sick and is in the hospital or um, just there's so much uncertainty with life. Right. Team members have children that have been ill. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so um, in that episode, I share a lot of the strategies of like, well, how did my business survive? And it was about the building blocks of years of putting the team together and systems together and having an emergency backup plan. So if anyone's interested, you can find that definitely on my podcast, Productivity Straight Talk. Um, you know, we always think it's not going to happen to us. And I will tell you, I, I also didn't think it was going to happen to us, but I was happy that we had some sort of plan in place so that the business did not crumble uh, with something not so unknown, like like you for two and 12 days too is a long time to be out of the business and MIA from from your team. Yes, we learned so much from COVID, didn't we? Not just yeah. about, you know, our own health. I had no idea. I mean, you got it really bad if you were hospitalized, yeah. but, you know, it's not just, um, it was you know, for me also, it was a financial wake up call because yeah. I was like, okay, you know, everyone's businesses was suffering and I didn't have any emergency, as you just mentioned, have the emergency plan in place um, for me being out sick. For me, you know, thank God we got the PPP loan, but you know, that was, you know, really helpful. But, you know, it wasn't just the PPP loan. It was me realizing, oh my gosh, I don't have a financial emergency plan if, you know, thank God, I, you know, yeah. a lot of my clients are in medical, so I wasn't as affected as bad as a lot of um, my 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 friends that have yeah. businesses. But yeah, having that emergency backup plan, I think, is so important for for everything, for financial, for health. Yeah. When we talk about wanting to reduce stress, like we keep thinking it's not going to happen to us, but I think nobody would have thought five years ago there would have been a world pandemic. So I hope that we can learn from this to say, like, we never know what's going to happen and. And unfortunately, until you decide that that is the priority is creating that plan and that is the priority to create the processes and procedures, those are the things that do keep getting kicked down the curb for other, you know, high value, high priority items. And really, when you need them, those are the high priority things is that plan. So, yeah, I, I would encourage anyone to get that on their projects list for sure. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. Was you know, I wanted before I uh, wrap up um, to know if there was anything else that you wanted to add for us today. I would love for you to share with us how my viewers can, you know, hire you, find you, follow you. Um, if you want to just give us those details real quick um, so that everybody um, yeah. knows how to reach out to you. Absolutely. So you can find me over at amberdelagarza.com um, is my website. And I um, serve my clients in two really focused areas, which is private coaching, peak performance coaching. And then I have a group coaching program called Leverage Lab. Um, I also have a podcast called Productivity Straight Talk, and we are going on over five years of talking all things business strategy, time management, productivity, and I'd love for you to, um, you know, tune in if you listen to podcasts. Um, and then the place I hang out most is Instagram, and that's Amber underscore De La Garza. Awesome. Well, again, guys, follow Amber. She's amazing. She inspires me. This is why I asked her to be on the show. Um, she's somebody that, as a business owner, and, you know, I like to think of myself as pretty organized, but I read stuff that Amber shares and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, like, right. <laughs> so follow Amber, do yourself a favor. And I'm going to thank you so much for being on the show today, Amber. I know you're super busy, so we're going to let you go. And it have was my pleasure today. Thank you so much, Ginger. Thank you.